While she's known as being a bubbly, on-camera personality and cook, Rachel Ray has been called a homewrecker, a crack peddler, and so much more. Life behind the lights and cameras has often been tragic for the TV chef. Welcome and sit and relax. I love firsts and this is the first show! Rachel Ray is known for many things. High levels of energy, widespread knowledge of cooking despite never having attended culinary school, and tons of drive. But one of her most defining characteristics is her gravelly voice. Whether you watched her long-running syndicated show or not, chances are that if you are familiar with Ray, you are also familiar with her signature rasp. While Ray has sounded this way for as long as she has been famous, cigarettes or any other voice-altering substance are not to blame. In fact, Ray has struggled with her voice for her entire life, and it was especially bad pre-puberty. Ray's voice box has continuously been a problem for her, as she caught croup, an infection that affects the airway, when she was growing up. Ray told People magazine in 2006, "...I had a lot of croup as a kid, so I don't have the strongest vocal cords to begin with." I went to a voice doctor who taught me exercises for my throat and to cut back a little on the caffeine. In 2008, Ray also had to go in for surgery to remove a cyst on one of her vocal cords. But she was back to her bubbly, gravelly voice self after a week of strict vocal rest. Ray moved to New York City in 1995, only one year after new crime-fighting tactics were introduced. Within two years, she became the victim of a violent mugging in the lobby of her own Queens apartment building. She recounted to people, "...this kid comes in behind me. Next thing I know, he shoves my face up against the door, jams a gun into my back, and says, "'Give me your bag.'" I flipped the top off the mace my dad had given me when I moved to New York City, spun around, and started screaming. The robber was deterred, only to return the following week to beat Ray up in an alley. These incidents prompted her to flee the city for upstate New York, saying, "'Dude, I got mugged twice within one week. Wouldn't you want to leave?' She's yeah. like the most peaceful person I'm you could it. meet." The vast majority of the hate Rachel Ray has received has come from the tabloid media or the public. Rarely has she faced criticism from one of her peers, so it was a huge shocker when she was called out by another big name in culinary broadcasting back in 2009. It all began when Ray signed on to appear in advertisements for Duncan, which seemed like a great idea since Ray built her brand on fast and easy meals. The partnership may have fit Ray's brand, but even she admitted to ABC News that it turned into a PR fiasco after Anthony Bourdain called her evil and said she was basically peddling crack to kids. The late chef was by no means the only one to bash Ray's choice. Some other critics were outraged because they thought her scarf was a symbol for Islamic extremism, but Ray appeared undaunted by the backlash. She told ABC News, they came to me and they said, "'We want to make healthier food for America. You drink a lot of coffee. You grew up on Dunkin' Donuts.'" She also noted that Duncan provided support for her charity, Yummo, adding, "'They've been very supportive of me. I don't regret a thing. Not for a minute.'" Rachel Ray has had some legitimate criticism thrown her way, but she has also had a few instances of unnecessary hate. There was one particular rumor that was so ludicrous that it was almost humorous, except the hate tossed Ray's way was real, and no one could blame her for being upset about it. We are, of course, talking about how Ray was reeled into the Jay-Z and Beyoncé cheating scandal due to people on the internet's collective stupidity. Her name is what got her into trouble, since it is strikingly similar to that of another Rachel, who was accused of being Jay-Z's mistress. The other Rachel was designer Rachel Roy. Much of people's belief that Roy was involved with Jay-Z stems from an Instagram post she made about good hair, which was interpreted as a reference to Beyoncé's famous Becky with the good hair lyric. The Beehive went in on Roy. But some of B's less astute fans saw Rachel Roy and immediately thought of Ray. Despite the former being a fashion designer with no television connections, Ray then became the target of rage, receiving tweets such as, "...never watching your show again, Rachel. You are a homewrecker." What a difference a vowel makes. What yeah. a difference yeah. a vowel oh, makes. Boy. Rachel Ray married John Cusimano, a musician, actor, and lawyer, in 2005. And fans are quite familiar with him by way of his frequent appearances on Ray's daytime show. 
Unfortunately, while the host has never been accused of cheating herself, she has for years had to deal with reports of her husband's indiscretions. Plus, she has faced a lot of judgment from the public for her husband's actions, which have not even been proven true. Despite the unverified nature of the rumors, Ray and Cusimano have continually had to defend their relationship. In a 2007 interview with People, Ray confirmed she had heard about six women her husband allegedly cheated with but made it clear she was no duped spouse, saying, I've known where he is every night since we've been married. And we have talked every day since the night we met. The couple also felt pushed to put out an official denial in 2013 after tabloids alleged that Cusimano was a regular at a New York City swingers club called Checkers. With their publicist sharing, this is yet another pack of lies printed by the National Enquirer who have been targeting John and Rachel for several years with no merit. Many people can identify with not seeing eye to eye with a relative or even cutting them out of the picture when the relationship becomes too toxic. In the case of Rachel Ray, it was a more distant relative who decided to call her out in the media, her cousin, who was incensed over the death of her mother and armed with the belief that Ray is to blame. The unfortunate death of Ray's aunt turned into a full-on war after the TV personality and her husband skipped out on the funeral, and the tabloids jumped on the chance to paint Ray in a negative light. Ray's aunt, Geraldine, died after accidentally locking herself outside in freezing weather. This occurred in November 2013 when she was house-sitting for her sister, Ray's mother, Elsa, in Chile, upstate New York. In an interview with the National Enquirer, Ray's cousin Gina said, "'My mother is dead today because the Ray family neglected her.'" When it came time for the funeral, Ray and her husband were not in attendance due to work, with Gina blasting the couple, saying, "'It's inexcusable. It shows a total lack of caring.'" No idea why the dog chews on me. I contain nothing that would help them live a happy, healthy life like Nutrish, whole health blend. I'm a stick. When a celebrity puts their name on something, they are often expected to be held accountable for that product. When Rachel Ray's dog food, Nutrish, faced a giant lawsuit, Ray shouldered nearly all of the public outrage rather than simply a portion of it. People seem to either forget or conveniently ignore that she was not involved with the day-to-day -day operations or the manufacturing of the product line when it was found to have a harmful ingredient. The pet food line was originally manufactured by Ainsworth Pet Nutrition before being purchased by the J.M. Smucker Company, who owned it when a $5 million class-action lawsuit was filed in 2018. In the lawsuit, a consumer pointed out that the so-called natural dog food contained the herbicide glyphosate which he alleged was false advertising. A judge dismissed the case in 2019 due to a lack of specificity, but Ray already took the brunt of the harsh criticism from the media. That is to be expected. The canine food is officially named Rachel Ray Nutrish, but one would expect the actual defendant, Smucker, to be name-checked in the headlines, too. You're ridiculous! You're so cute! It's okay, Marty. One second, honey. If I can do it, Marty, you can. In mid-2020, Rachel Ray lost her upstate New York home to fire, and in 2021, extreme flooding took her New York City apartment. But Ray lost more than just property and material possessions during the COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, she also had to say goodbye to her beloved dog, Isabu, who died in May 2020. She wrote on Instagram, "'Today, John Cusimano and I mourn the loss of a dog, a pit bull who taught us more about unconditional love, empathy, and understanding of one another than we could have ever imagined. Despite her loss, Ray remained able to put things into perspective. She recognized the gift of time that she was able to spend with Isabu due to the world slowing down. She explained in an interview with Extra, "'When I lost my dog, I was so grateful that I could be with her the last several months of her life. She died in my arms. I felt guilty and grateful at the same time. People suffered actual human loss from COVID or because they couldn't get care, and how many people died alone?' A month after Isabu died, Ray and her husband adopted another pup, who they named Bella Boo Blue in honor of their deceased pit bull. 